everybody, this is Dave Dugdale, LearningDSLRVideo.com. Today I'm reviewing the Canon 6D and I'm comparing it to my Canon 5D Mark III. The 6D is Canon's first entry-level full-frame camera. So where does the 6D fit in price-wise in Canon's line? The T5i, for instance, is around $750 on B&H. The 6D is at about $900. Then you have to take a big leap to get the 5D Mark III, which is coming in around $3,100. Then if you want to get the 6D, it's coming in around $1,800. So it's kind of in the middle of those. Since I'm creating a course on the Canon 6D, I've done a lot of different tests with it. And I've just taken it lots of different places from the zoo to different lighting situations, anywhere I could to see how well the 6D performs. Wherever I could, I used the kit lens for the Canon 60, which is the 24 to 105 on both cameras to keep the test as even as I could. So those that are thinking of stepping up to a full frame camera, one of the nice things about it is you don't really have to do any more math in your head because when you say 24 to 105, it means 24 to 105. It's not like you have a 50 millimeter lens on our Rebel line of camera or crop sensor camera where you have to say, well, 50 times 1.6 is roughly 80. So it's really nice not having to do that math if you're going to a full frame camera. Since there always seems to be so much interest in noise tests, I'm gonna go ahead and do the noise test first. Um, to be honest, I think we've gotten to the level now where these cameras can pretty much see in the dark. Um, but I wish actually Canon would work more on the dynamic range than the noise at this point. But anyway, here's 12,800 with noise reduction disabled. And here it is with it enabled. And man, I'm, I gotta tell you, all the tests that I've run, enabling the high ISO noise reduction is just a good thing. I can see no way that it degrades the performance. I always just leave it on. So all these tests are done with the noise reduction turned on full strong. All right, just so you have a base to know where we're starting from. And if you're watching this on an iPhone, you're not gonna see hardly any difference between noise levels. So you should really be watching this on a computer at the full 1080 resolution. And if you're on Vimeo, you can download it and watch it at 1080 if you like. So we're ISO 100 with the reduction on and this is with the noise reduction off. So we're gonna step all the way up to 1600. Uh, 5D Mark III is on the left and the 6D is on the right for all these tests. This is 3200, 6400, and in a minute we're gonna zoom in here in a second. And this is 12,800 with noise reduction on and this is with noise reduction turned off so you can see what it's doing. So next up, we're gonna see it close in. Here's 1600. I'm gonna say the 5D Mark III wins. I'm gonna say it wins here at 3200 again. 6400, I'd call it almost a tie. And 12,800, I'm gonna call that a tie. And here it is with uh, noise reduction disabled. All right, here's a piano recital I went to, and this is at ISO 1600. And I gotta tell you, you know, pretty much they look the same. And here is a woman in the audience. Take a look at her when I zoom in on her, or actually focus on her. The 60 on the right, there's a little bit of a color difference, but at, this is ISO 6400. And to be honest, there's it really hard to tell the difference between the two in terms of noise levels. All right, next up, I wanted to look at the dynamic range or the latitude uh, in terms of video. Um, so we're gonna start off with uh, a piano here. The 5D Mark III is on the top and the 60 is on the bottom. And you're looking to see what the difference between the highlights and the shadows um, and what's going on, especially in this tree right here, looking into the shadows and then also looking at the snow as well. I'm not seeing that much of a difference. And I, again, I'm using the exact same lens for each camera and trying to use the exact same settings. Um, here's a distant shot of the mountains. Again, it looks very similar. And then going into 105 on the, the same shot, um, it looks, again, it looks very similar. All right, next up, I wanted to look at the dynamic range in terms of the picture style, see if there's anything different going on between the two cameras. And since I was running a lot of different tests from my Canon 60 course, I thought I'd share some of this with you. All right, first up is the standard picture style. Next up is portrait picture style. Landscape. Neutral. Faithful. And just for kicks, I threw in black and white. 
So I'm not seeing much of a difference between the two cameras in terms of the picture styles. Even though the sensors are different, they're both full frame, but they have a different megapixel count. All right, so next up, I wanted to look at the sharpness of the two cameras. Use, again, using the same exact lens. In this case, I did an HDR shot and I synced the post-processing exactly the same between the two cameras. So they're on level playing field using the same exact lens, same settings. Um, and I try to take them as fast as I could, uh, only like a minute apart, which is not easy to do when you're doing bracketed shots. Um, and when you look close up, um, and this is where the only way I could really tell is when I process it with HDR, because sometimes you can see the details just a little bit better. Um, I'm going to have to give the wind to the 6D here, because a lot of times when I was looking at the raw images side by side, not an HDR image, it was really difficult to tell um, sharpness difference. So next up I want to show you is video. Here's at the distance of some charts I just printed off the internet. And if you zoom in, they look very similar in terms of sharpness. You're going to see, the thing you're going to notice here is you're going to see some aliasing and moiré happening on the 6D side. That's because the 6D doesn't have an anti-aliasing filter built in, which we're going to get into more later in terms of video. Now we go to the still side. Um, again, this is one of those instances where I really couldn't tell the difference between the two. The only time I could do it, tell the difference was when um, I process it in HDR. So images wise, you know, both of them take amazing images like this one with the 6D, this is an HDR image. And then in video mode, sharpness wise, they all both look really similar of this, like this tree for instance. Um, if you look at the pine needles, they look very similar. And then this flower, um, but the only thing in focus here is that uh, pink flower. But sharpness wise on the video side, they look very similar. Before I move on to the Moray test, I want to tell you guys that I have finished my Canon 60 course. And by the time you're watching this, it should be out. So if you're looking for a beginner's kind of guide to get you started uh, using the Canon 60 for video, it's a four hour course. Um, I think it'll be really helpful. So definitely check out my site. All right, next up, we're gonna talk about Moray and aliasing. The 5D Mark III has an anti-aliasing filter built into it, which has been wonderful. Um, it just saved a lot of my shots. And for, for instance, where you're gonna get Moray mostly is when you're shooting at 720 or you're shooting um, horizontal lines, not so much vertical lines. And the best way to demonstrate this for you is looking at the 5D Mark III right here you're gonna see horizontal and vertical lines. And you like the HVA ducts right there. You're gonna see a slight bit of aliasing um, where those, the ventilation shafts are, those horizontal lines. But when you look at the 6D, it's like, whoa, a um, lot more um, patterns you're seeing on those lines as well. It usually happens when the uh, line is not perfectly horizontal, it's like maybe a half a degree or degree or two degrees uh, different, you're gonna get that kind of um, nasty aliasing on that actual line, whatever that line is. Sometimes aliasing happens and sometimes it doesn't. It looks, sometimes when you're actually looking for it, you can't get it. And I thought I'd be getting it on this girl's dress right here, but the lines were too far away to really see what was going on in terms of aliasing. Here's the 5D Mark III and here's the 6D. And we're not really seeing any issues at all when the lines are spread apart far enough. Now, if I were to back up or um, zoom out, I might get more aliasing on this dress. Next up, I wanna take a look at a landscape shot. On the left, 5D Mark III, 60 on the right. You'll notice the road and the guardrail has this kind of uh, aliasing, kind of dancing along on the side. And probably the worst example I can give you, and not that you'd ever shoot power lines, but uh, here's the 5D Mark III, um, and I'm zooming out from the power lines, and it does a fantastic job. Um, and this is at 720 on the 5D Mark III. It looks just perfect. And now we're gonna step over to the 6D, and you're gonna see, oh, not so perfect. So we've got some, a lot of aliasing. It's kind of like this um, magenta and kind of cyan colors coming off of the power lines. Next, I wanna show you a couple examples in terms of roofs, which is a lot of people always show you. And you might be saying, Dave, I got the 6D, I'm not gonna shoot a roof, but what in this case right here was a, a bike race and you didn't really pay attention to what was in the background. You're shooting at F16 and everything's in focus. You can see on the 5D Mark III does pretty well and the 6D has definitely got some aliasing and this is at 1080. So here's the 5D Mark III and I'm just basically zooming out and it looks fine. But when we go to the 6D and we're at 720, you can see 
um, not only aliasing, but now we're getting moiré patterns developing on the actual roof line. So it can happen not even on horizontal lines. Um, here we're shooting at 720 again, and here's a couple of lines, but look at the grass to the left. And it might be, and if you're watching this on an iPhone, you're not gonna see this. These are details that are gonna get lost when you, you bring it down to such a small size in an iPhone, or even maybe even an iPad. I haven't checked an iPad, but I know I've already transcoded it, uploaded these shots to Vimeo, and I can tell you on the iPhone, you're not gonna see some of this stuff. When you look at these zebras, for instance, the zebra's stripes are actually not too bad. This is the 6D, but look at the dirt in front of the, the zebras. You can see it's got some of that aliasing quality to it. And again, here is you know typical architectural stuff you're gonna run into problems with when you're shooting at 720, just a lot of aliasing on the roof. And here we've got this rhino stepping up to the gate. You probably can't see this or not, but the lines of the actual gate that are keeping the rhino from leaving the park, um, those are lighting up with aliasing. And this is shot at um, higher resolution, 1080. So years ago when I got my Canon T2i, um, aliasing more I didn't really bother me so much. I mean, I kind of saw it maybe on a subconscious level and I really didn't care. But what happens is I try to increase a little bit on every video, just make the production value just a little bit better. And now I've gotten to the point where when I see that and it's distracting enough to pull the, eyes, the, the viewer's eye away from what they're looking at, um, to me it becomes a useless shot. Now with the 6D, I, I haven't tried it, but you can buy a anti-aliasing filter and put it into the camera yourself. And they're about 350 bucks, and I'll put a link to it in the show notes, but you kinda can get around this issue. Um, but it's just one thing that, this is probably the Achilles heel of the 6D, is the aliasing Amore. All right, next up we're gonna talk about autofocus. I know a lot of people on the still side are very interested on you know, how well it autofocuses. Well, the 5D Mark III, 61 autofocus points, which is awesome. Uh, 6D only has 11, which you might be thinking is not so awesome. But the 6D has one cross type in the center that is rated at a minus three EV. Um, I originally thought I could maybe test for this, um, but I looked at Wikipedia on how to do this. You know, there's relative and absolute measurement and all a bunch of stuff, and it looked like there's a whole bunch of math there. So I was like, all right, I'm not gonna try to do it super accurately. I'm gonna do it unscientifically, but I'm gonna do it in such a way where the two cameras are on an even playing field. So what I did is went outside and I set up uh, the backside of my digital calibration target. I put um, one, cross type uh, mark on the with some tape and then I had one uh, horizontal and you can barely even make them out on this video as you can probably see but what I was able to do was uh, with there was hardly any light and you can see I was shooting this with my camcorder in night vision mode because <laughs> it was so dark but basically I was able to lock on focus after about three seconds which is kind of long but there's hardly any light with the 60 um, which was awesome but when I went to 5d mark 3 um, it couldn't lock on to that center cross type um, mark that I had on there after it took about a minute before I could actually get it. And then on the, uh, the one that wasn't cross type, it was just a horizontal piece of tape. Uh, the 60 was able to acquire it in four seconds and the 5D Mark III could never even acquire on that one at all. So the 60 definitely has an awesome center cross type focus point. Now, for me, that's the one I use most of the time. And I was really um, fascinated. I was watching a Kelby training, if you know who that is. And they had a whole thing on sports photography. And Scott Kelby, who shoots uh, NFL uh, football, as well as uh, D Dave Black, I believe his name is, also does. And they were talking about how they autofocus in one of their training classes. And I was really surprised that both of them, for the majority of the time, said they used just the center autofocus point. And so that they weren't using like all 61 points or, or 11 points or whatever. Um, so if you're thinking, you know, sports photographers, um, some of these guys just use the center, center autofocus point. All right, next up, we're gonna talk about the differences between the two cameras. The 5D Mark III has a 22.1 megapixel, whereas the 60 has 20.9 megapixel. The 60 is a lot quieter in terms of the, the actual shutter noise than the 5D Mark III. Both the 5D and the Mark III are made out of a magnesium alloy, but where the difference is is the 60 on the top has some sort of polycarbonate 
top to allow the Wi-Fi and the GPS to go through it. And as of the shooting of this video, the 5D Mark III has HDMI uncompressed out, which is awesome, whereas the 6D doesn't have that feature. There's a big weight difference, um, and you can definitely feel it when I'm carrying these two cameras around. The 5D Mark III weighs 2.1 pounds, whereas the 6D weighs 1.7 pounds. In terms of the shutter speed for stills, the 5D Mark III comes in at six frames per second, whereas the 6D comes in about 4.5 frames per second. The 6D only has an SD card slot, whereas the 5D Mark III has two card slots. The 6D has two custom memories on the mode dial, whereas the 5D Mark III has three. The 6D has no way of renaming the file name structure, like if I wanted to name it Dave or 6D, um, the prefix. Um, you just can't do that on the 6D like you can on the 5D Mark III. The play and the zoom buttons are on the right hand side of the camera, which I actually kind of like better on the 6D versus the 5D Mark III where they're on the left. The 6D has a 97%, whereas the 5D Mark III has a 100% viewfinder. The 6D lacks a headphone jack where the 5D Mark III has one. On the 5D Mark III, you can shoot to RAW for HDR mode, whereas the 6D, if you're shooting in the HDR mode, it only will shoot to JPEG. In terms of how the cameras are similar, both of them have no built-in flash. Both of them have the same codecs for video shooting and they both have an electronic level and they both have time code. All right, next up is GPS. The GPS works wonderful, it's extremely accurate and it almost seemed like it was working indoors a little bit too, which was really amazing. Um, on the still side, uh, you can bring it in into Lightroom, you'll see longitude, latitude actually takes you to map. Uh, wonderful tool, great for scouting. On the video side in Lightroom, it doesn't appear, which is kind of odd because I use a, a program called Media Info, I'll put a link down in my show notes. But that media info could actually has listed in the meta information the longitude and latitude. So basically, great scouting tool, just gonna have to worry about the, the battery issue in terms of it being drained overnight. All right, next up we'll talk about the Wi-Fi, which is a really cool addition feature for this. Um, there's lots of possibilities. Um, if you're a bird photographer, for instance, you could just put your camera out on a tripod next to a bird feeder and just to be taking pictures all day long, which is really cool. On the video side, not so much. They're giving us video thumbnails, but they're not giving us streaming um, from the device to the, you know, you could use an iPad or whatever device, Android, iPhone. Um, the GoPro, on the other hand, does this really well and you can stream video, especially at lower reses, but this one doesn't. Hopefully, this, is, this has gotta be one of their first releases because it's 1.0.0.1. Hopefully in the future, they'll give us a better update. But uh, awesome tool. Um, and what I'm gonna be using it for, then in probably a few nights from now, I'm gonna shoot some um, astrophotography and I'm gonna use my iPad to actually transfer the images over uh, the stills and then zoom in to see if I've got the focus on the stars correctly. Because sometimes it's really hard to tell on the back of the display of the camera. So really cool feature with the Canon 6D. All right, real quick, we'll talk about audio. I always, I always like to test. So what I did is um, really unscientific. I put pink noise in front of the both cameras, equal distance, and I got to where the meters were right in the middle, and I recorded just basically silence, and I'm gonna play it for you right now. And as you can hear, it sounds like the 6D is just a little bit quieter than the 5D Mark III. So very unscientific test, but perhaps maybe, you know, Canon is getting their act together, maybe a little bit. It's still pretty noisy, but maybe they're actually putting in some better audio components on their circuit boards in these cameras. So which camera is right for you? I'd say on the video side, I'd say the clear winner here has got to be the 5D Mark III if you've got the extra money to spend. Um, the audio in terms of the headphone jack, I love it. Um, it could be overcome if you're using an external device like a Zoom or um, the Juice Link device. You can definitely get around not having a headphone jack. I personally like it because I like to, you know, I'm a run and gun shooter and I like to travel light. Um, obviously in terms of more analyzing, the 5D Mark III does awesome, especially at 720. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Um, 6D, unfortunately, we've got that issue. And I, like I said, depends on what you're using the camera for. If you're doing a lot of corporate interviews and um, you don't bring a large monitor with you and you're not looking at the client's shirt or whoever you're shooting an interview and you come back 
and you see that it's just dancing around with more A patterns, your shot's pretty much ruined. Um, if you're just a dad who's taking a video of their kids and you don't care about occasional moray and aliasing, um, this camera definitely might be for you in terms of video. But if you're if you're stepping up to a full frame camera, you know, what I found is I didn't really mind it in the beginning, but now I really mind it. So if you're gonna keep this camera for more than maybe three years, maybe by the end of its lifespan for you, you might be starting to get bothered by it. Um, and again, you might be able to buy an aftermarket um, and take aliasing filter, hard to say, and put it in the camera for about $350. So if you're a wedding photographer on a budget, I think the 60 is the clear choice. Um, it's actually got a quieter shutter, so you won't be noticed as much. Um, image quality wise between the two cameras, very similar. High ISO performance is excellent on both of them. Um, the only thing I would say on downside, and I am not a wedding photographer, so um, take this with a grain of salt, but if I was, I would be really interested in the 5D Mark III because it has two card slots, because I would be as nervous as heck that one of those cards would get corrupted and I would lose images. So being able to write to two cards at the same time is a big feature, but um, if you're not that nervous about it and you've never had a corrupted card, 6D might be the camera for you if you're a wedding photographer. So if you're a sports photographer, which I'm not, um, I, maybe I give you the recommendation that the 5D Mark III might be the camera for you because you can get a higher burst rate. However, let's say if you're shooting a high school football game and the lighting is really poor, well, the 6D autofocus, that center point that's a lot more sensitive, might be a winner. But again, um, take it with a grain of salt because I am not a uh, sporting sports photographer at all. So I'd say all in all, both these cameras are excellent. They're both full frame cameras, which is wonderful. They basically can see in the dark, which is just amazing. Um, I'd say on more on the professional side, you'd want the 5D Mark III if you don't want to get your shots ruined. Um, maybe the 6D if you're doing it more of an amateur level. Um, so thanks for watching. If you want to help support my site, definitely go click the link below for either one of these cameras. It'll take you to B&H. It doesn't cost you anything extra and it helps support what I'm doing here because these reviews do take a lot of time. So that's pretty much it. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.